welcome, welcome to our latest edition of To Debate, our podcast of debate today with a literary topic, 1984. Are we getting closer to it? The novel, of course. Sebastian, you told me that you read the book. I, I read the book, yes, when I was 13 or 14, so just 10 years ago. I can do the maths. <laughs> <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> you're, just, you're just changing the historical facts here. Well, you know, fake news is news. Right? <laughs> War is peace. Freedom is slavery. So this is what it is all about. Yes, I did read the book. I loved it. If you have not read it, strongly recommended. Do you want to give a summary of it, by the way? Yeah, let's do that. Um, 1984 is one of these tropes everyone heard of. And I believe most people know a few themes out of the book. And in fact, it made it into our daily language with a lot of terms. So the book was written by a gentleman with the name George Orwell in 1949. It plays in a state called Oceania, uh, which could be a Western state. Uh, George Orwell was from the UK. So people argued that he might have used the UK as uh, the place that he had in mind while writing the book. And it plays a lot with, with themes that can be described as anti-Stalinist. So we, we are in a, in a time where Stalin was in power, where the Great War was just over. So this is the historical backdrop that George Orwell had when he wrote the book. Uh, in the book, we are in the then future, 1984. For him, that was far distant future. For us, that's past already. Do you know that? Uh, actually, the book, well, although it was published in 1949, it was written in 1948, and he just switched the last two digits to write. I, I did not know that. Yeah, that's why it's in 1984. Yeah. Sweden, he wanted to yeah. put it in the future and um, assume a few themes there, but that's interesting. Very cool. Uh, in that book, um, the main figure of that book is uh, somebody uh, with the name Winston Smith. And Winston works in the Ministry of Truth. And the Ministry of Truth is the governmental organization in that state, Oceania, that is rewriting history and writing propaganda. So it's the propaganda ministry of sorts, if you will. In the entire state, there is a language called Newspeak that has new words for certain themes and has things redefined in order to control what people say and think when they say it. And there is a theme of surveillance. So people are surveilled 24-7 uh, in the entire state by, by the big brother, the all-knowing agents of the, of the government. Sounds pretty much like today, doesn't it? Uh, we, we, we'll get to that. we get to that. Uh, other words you might have uh, heard that actually come from the book are uh, th words like thought crime. Thought crime is uh, one of the themes that comes up. Newspeak was another example I just made. Uh, two, by uh, two plus two equals five is something that was um, first depicted in that book. So there are a lot of themes and memes that made it out of the book into general media and culture mainstream. So anything to add from your side? Um, no, I think we're good with a, with a summary. It's a very interesting and quite scary book, to be honest. Yeah. There's some scenes which uh, once you have been exposed to them, uh, you will probably never forget them. Yeah, uh, It's that uh, troubling or damaging. There is uh, torture in that book. Um, interesting, by the way, um, in the West, we like to think that the book describes the West, but actually Orwell really had Stalinist uh, Russia in mind when he wrote the book. And the Russians thought so as well. So in Russia, the book was banned for sales for 30 years and there was an underground movement that copied and distributed the book uh, secretly in Russia. So are we getting closer to 1984 is the motion. I have the pleasure to go first. And you, Sebastian, you will argue for that motion in your second um, part of the argument. That's correct. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. 1984, fantastic book. Lots of lessons to learn from the book. Themes are, as I said, nationalism, surveillance, control of people, torture of dissidents, history, revisionism, distortion of language, all the things. And there have been claims that the US specifically, or the West in general, turns into an Orwellian state ever since the book came out. 
that is something that has been claimed over and over again. But the truth is, the reality is far from the world that is described in 9084. Let me say three things as first arguments on that. First, if you are invoking 9084 in a country in which 9084 is available for purchase and can be freely deployed and discussed even in a podcast, the question is if you actually read and understood the book. Because this alone wouldn't be possible in an Aurelian state. Second, the practices that I mentioned, yes, we are, we are inching towards being more nationalistic, might be. Uh, yes, there is a lot of surveillance going on, but we are not even close to the themes that are described in the book. For instance, even when we surveil our own citizens, usually they are not tortured afterwards until they change their mind and then be brought back to, the, to society. That's not happening, and I don't think that this will happen anytime soon. Uh, in fact, our dissidents in the Western world still have way more freedom to express themselves than the dissidents in other more radical, more totalitarian regimes. A good example of that is if you look at North Korea. North Korea, just to pull out one tiny example, in every office in North Korea there's a radio, that's always plugged in, has no off switch and has the governmental radio station turned on. I would call that Orwellian and we are far, far of this idea. So, no, we are not even close to an Orwellian state. There are other arguments that I will use in my next segment. And uh, with that, I hand over to you, Sebastian, to show me where I'm, in your opinion, wrong. And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his argument for the motion. China is watching you. The US is watching you. The UK is watching you. These are our new big brothers. Just look up on your favorite search engine. Uh, BBC reporter caught on CCTV in China in seven minutes. It took seven minutes for the Chinese police, it was a stunt, uh, to actually find where that BBC reporter was in China and be seized by the police, seven minutes thanks to their 110 million CCTVs, bound to increase to 400 million in the next three years. So yes, I think we're being very closely monitored. And there is this is a surveillance society. Uh, and what's the most striking here is that we're accepting it. And we're accepting it very passively. I have further examples of showing how there's a gradual shift in society towards that to that, towards that 1984-like society. We're not there yet, but we get closer closer to it as the years go by. For instance, it would not have been possible to imagine a few years ago that the U.S. Marshals at the border, when you get into the U.S., would be asking for your Facebook password. Now this is the case. And if you refuse to do that, well, you know, let's see where you end up. So it may, be not be, may not be torture right away, but who knows what's going to happen next. In fact, if you're detained and caught on CCTV in China because you're a human rights activist, I can't guarantee you you're not going to be tortured by the Chinese authorities. Honestly, I don't think we can guarantee that. And it's not just about the US in this world. And even in the US, we could actually question with Guantanamo Bay whether people have a fair trial. Um, data is in the cloud. Privacy is no longer a concept that the younger generations are sensitive about. The explosion of various technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloning, it's inevitable. It's not all doom and gloom, but it is very scary and terrifying, and it's exciting at the same time. It's likewise, I will have more examples to share. But overall, if you relate to what I'm saying here, and if you know that there's so many CCTVs everywhere, then we are getting closer to that 1984 world that George Orwell was describing. Dirk, let's hear his rebuttal. Yeah, surveillance is the number one argument everyone brings forward. Basically, the only argument people bring forward. We definitely live in a world where a lot of surveillance happens and more and more surveillance happens. And you argue that in a country like China, which then may be the Oceania um, equivalent, uh, this may lead to torture and being, being held captive without a trial and these things. Be that as it may. In the book 1984, there are a few other things. For instance, history gets rewritten in that book. There is a whole governmental office only trying to rewrite history and writing propaganda. I don't think that we are actually even close to that. 
not even China, not even Russia manages to really control what people publish these days. They, they fight for it. They want to close down channels. And for every channel they close down, there are other channels opening up. Because in this world of clouds, lack of data privacy, information flows that go in all directions, what you forget is that it's not a central, in the, um, central institution controlling it. It's actually a distributed institution that controls it. Everyone, it's a two-edged sword, sword, everyone can use that power to distribute information. And the US is a good example of that. So for every every attempt to disclose something, uh, close something down, something else is published, something else is announced, something else is described. So we lack the central powerful agent that, that really can lock down in the way that is described in 1984. Now, the most important argument I have to make is I don't think that we as humans are really compatible with a scenario like in 1984. I think it's much easier for any uh, government that wants to be totalitarian to get us loving being slaves instead of uh, forcing us into into obedience. And that's not my quote. That's something a, a, a another famous author said, Aldous Huxley, who wrote another dystopian book called Brave New World. In Brave New World, people are from the beginning pushed into roles and they like their roles. They have a lot of fun, a lot of play, a lot of meaningless exercise that they can do in their spare time. And they love the world they're in. They, they, they are being held artificially stupid and uninformed, but they enjoy it. And I think that's the way more likely scenario. 1984 is a, a scary book um, all about torture and forcing people to say and, and, and believe different things than they originally would gravitate towards. And I simply think uh, neither as humans nor as totalitarian uh, leaders, this is a scenario you really like. So as humans, we will be on the other end of the spectrum. We will start clicking screens and uh, enjoying meaningless arguments on social media way more than uh, allowing a government to control every move we make. Now it's Sebastian's turn. War is peace is what is written in the 1984 in terms of how the authorities claim uh, and justify why we have to go constantly at war against another imaginary or real state. Now, what is the language for the past 16 years? War on terror, as if terror was another state, as if it was uh, clearly identifiable. It's basically a justification for these various governments around the world, wherever they are, to justify reducing the freedom societies have. And this is exactly the same as saying war is peace, because supposedly these imaginary war or wars against ISIS or other groups in various countries is to increase your freedom in your homeland. Now, I let, I let our listeners decide whether that's logical or not. The second thing is, you mentioned history does not get, get rewritten. Well, I, I beg to differ. I disagree on this. In fact, around the world, including in what we call democracies, history does get rewritten. There's a lot of debate in most societies whether the government should have a say in the writing of history books for children. Uh, there's a big debate in South Korea, for instance, on, on that topic, on the relationship they've had with Japan. They're still in denial on this aspect. In France, likewise, it's always a debate between history professors, historians, and the French state on who gets a say on how to write history. Uh, so unfortunately, there's always a tendency to be nationalistic and to change the past. This happens over and over again. Now, I mentioned France. Um, and how, in my previous um, two minutes, I mentioned how there's a gradual shift. It does not need to be just your simplistic version of, oh, because you can buy the book, the 1984 book, that means your democracy is your democracy is functioning and you have all the freedoms. No, I'll show you an example which is very striking and very personal. Uh, in 2002, presidential elections in France, Le Pen, Jean-Marie, father of Marine, was made it to the second round of presidential elections. That was a, a huge earthquake in France because never in the Fifth Republic since 1958 did we have anything but right wing against left wing? In this case, right wing against fascist party. Now, what happened between the two rounds of the presidential elections is that millions of people went down in the street to demonstrate against fascism. 2017, this year, Marine Le Pen makes it to the second round of presidential elections. What happened between the two rounds? No demonstrations. In 15 years, 
society has completely evolved, at least in France, in a lethargic, passive way, accepting gradually that fascism or extreme right-wing parties can have a hold on power, just like it's happened in Austria, just like it's happening across uh, Germany and in, in other countries. And this is a very gradual shift that you see also in these dystopian TV series like The Handmaid's Tale. You see how gradually you accept that women may have less rights because of some virus affecting their fertility. Uh, if you have seen or have not seen Black Mirror, a very nice, uh, very interesting TV series about the misuse of technology, you will see, um, among other things, very true things like the use of the hijacking of a webcam on your laptop or your phone and blackmailing you. This happens today. This will happen increasingly. It, it, it seems invisible, but this is a gradual shift that is affecting everyone and everything. So we are getting closer to this dystopian society that 1984 describes, even if it's not a central agent. It's decentralized, but it's even more scary in that case. There's no identified enemy. Final statements. Dirk goes first. In 1984, you have a central government that enjoys torturing its own citizens, surveils them 24-7 to control what they are saying, and if they say the wrong things, tortures them even more. There's an office that not only rewrites history, but also retraces every mentioning of that history and rewrites that too, so there is no proof of having rewritten history. Now today... We live in a globalized world that not even the Russians and the Chinese can escape from. The only ones actually escaping from that globalized world is North Korea, and they basically locked themselves down. Every other nation has no way to completely locking out alternative perspectives and views. Yes, we have more surveillance, but also do we have more sources of alternative perspectives, of facts, of information, and at least most countries in that spectrum and more countries than ever in history before, uh, we are not torturing our own citizens. So no, we are not getting closer to 1984. If anything, we're actually getting further away. Sebastian. OMG, LOL, hashtags, acronyms. This is the new speak, the... Imp the, the, the impoverished language that we use nowadays. And this is a problem also with what you called, Doug, just mentioned now, alternative information, alternative news, fake news. Uh, the thing is, even if you don't have access to a centralized source of truth, or if you have access to what you say, alternative so sources of truth, that's the problem. There's so much confusion that it, it is very easy for various superpowers to manipulate us. Uh, just today, we're recording this in December 2017, Russian warships have been spotted uh, across the Atlantic, very close to the cables which go between Europe and the US. Uh, what are they doing? Is it to hijack communications? There's most of trans the financial transactions and information goes through this, those cables. So yes, it's actually very simple for some of these superpowers to just change and monitor what's going on and influence. In fact, we've seen this with the, with the US elections. It's still ongoing, the debate to what extent the Russians have influenced uh, what was going on there. Um, and what worries me is that people in general, and maybe I'm making too much of a general statement here, uh, pride themselves with ignorance. How many people around you, Doug, or around me, pride themselves in refusing to fight, in refusing to engage in a debate because, oh, I'm not, I don't want drama, I don't want conflict. I hear, so, I hear this so often that it actually worries me. Yes, we should have healthy discussions uh, because Big Brother, Big Brothers are watching you. So resistance is possible. <laughs> All right, that's it. That was today's debate. Thank you, Sebastian, as always, for an engaging debate and for being such a formidable partner in these arguments. And Thank now let's hope you. 1984 will not become reality and you're wrong in this one. I want to hope the same thing. I want to hope that. Uh, I just don't think, uh, as I analyzed and came up with my arguments, that this is what's going to happen. Uh, I think it is going to happen that we get closer to 1984. So I hope like you, but so I'm pessimistic. Dear listener, go to the page and vote for whoever argument convinced you more. Let us know. Also, don't forget, we are everywhere. 
You can find us on Facebook, <laughs> we Twitter. We're and we're watching you. <laughs> <laughs> But apart from that, don't worry. Uh, yeah. you're safe. <laughs> Let's just say you're safe with us. Give yeah. us your vote. Yeah. Give us your vote. Give me your vote. That's actually the point. Come on. <laughs> It's a joint dictatorship. Right. Okay. We are double Give dictatorship. Give us your votes. Yeah. Give us your votes, your money, your soul. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going, you're derailing a little bit here, Sebastian. Psh, we don't want to tell them that. Um, yeah, no, seriously, please uh, let us know. Uh, this, this debate is twice as much fun for us when we see your votes coming in. And three times as much fun if you actually decide to debate with us. Maybe you have arguments we could have used that you want to share. And four uh, times as much if you vote for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's a direct, direct way into heaven if you vote for Sebastian. We should have a debate on that. <laughs> we will. I'm sure we will. At some point, we're going to have debated everything. I mean, we have, you yeah. know, you think you live etern eternally. So that's if we consider that and we have all the time in the world. Hang on. The thing is, I do want to live inter eternally, but I don't want to be stateless. Because I think the way we're going, we're, we're going to get banned from every single country in the world because we'll be criticizing every single country, religion, <laughs> political party, stream of thinking. Like, we're going to get banned. Like, can we? Oh, that reminds me. Actually, a close friend of mine um, has seeded that idea in, in my head to create, a, create our own country by buying off some islands from some state uh, which has nothing to do with those islands um anyway and we totally should do that and then surveil everyone on that island which would be the two of us while doing our debate and uh, i was trying to, i was well, hoping to create a better society by not you know, uh, coming with all the problems of other states and the, and the legacy laws uh, which are not relevant anymore uh, but you can have a citizenship if you hand over a million bitcoins i'll give you the the uh the details um, after this podcast recording <laughs> wonderful <laughs> all right thank, thank you for you. listening bye 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 did you read the other one brave new world i have not You should. That should go top of your list. Since we talk about a dystopian scenario today, I think Brave New World is way more likely. But anyway, that, that okay. is not the debate today. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. Aldous Huxley um, actually even exchanged letters with George Orwell. How about the religious argument? I, I if you if you believe it hard enough, then it's going to come true. I have faith in you, Doug. Yes. Ah, very good. <laughs> Is that what you want to hear? You want this on the record, don't you? You're, you're recording this, aren't you? <laughs> you're such a mother... Uh, Whatever. I'm always recording. You know that. I am recording too. Very good. Very good. So you're not trusting me. That's what you're saying, right? But you're recording... Yeah, you. I'm only recording my voice because I can't record yours. I don't have all that. I am recording everything. I know. Exactly. I we're, getting, we're getting closer and closer to 1984, don't you agree? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this little podcast, we are close at 1984. We have our own language. We are full, fully surveilling each other. <laughs> I think case closed, as usual. Before yeah. the debate started, we just... I'm sorry. Ah, damn it. <laughs> damn it. As always, Sebastian wins. <laughs> well. Uh, if only translated into the actual data. Uh, even right. my fans don't vote for me. God. What? They really. What is even my, fa what? my fans don't vote for me. In what, what debate? The current debate, you mean? Whatever debate. Oh. Whatever debate. They will really vote for the person who has convinced them the most. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> where's the friendship gone? Have you seen the latest Star Wars? Not yet, not yet. Ah, uh, you did? Last night. And? How was it? Is it good? Overrated. A fun movie? Overrated. Uh, can be overrated and still a fun movie. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's it's nice. Entertaining. Okay. Entertaining. But has all the themes, right? 
the the hairy gorilla thingy yes. and uh, <laughs> hey, even the green <laughs> the green the <old> blob <laughs> and the and the daddy issues everything is in there. <laughs> There's anyway. just so many things to read. That's what I said in our debate about eternal life, that I need the eternal life just to read the the few million books which are interesting. Not, may, they're maybe not all interesting, but... Yeah, so you don't need an eternal life. You just need life long enough to read the few million books that are interesting. Fair enough. But that, that I think, already sets the clock back a few <laughs> centuries. And honestly, I think it's like the limit theory in maths. You know, if it tends towards a long number... It's close enough to infinity, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's possible. It's, it's possible, but I think the likelihood is that you're going to lean towards the brighter future with caveat and with controls and everything that are, would be desired may not happen. But, yeah, also, you know. I, I think my natural tendency is not to believe in the extremes. So I, I, I think it's like it's always a normal distribution, right? So there is a certain likelihood that everything will be um, rainbows, uh, rainbows and unicorns uh, in some future, and there is a certain likelihood that we are all gonna gonna be doomed. It's gonna be terrible and the worst, worst, worst hell of a life. But it's very likely that it's going to be somewhere in the middle. So there is stuff that you're gonna hate, and there is stuff that's gonna be awesome, and it's going to be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> And and then in any case, we're all, it's all just a game simulation, isn't it? At least according to Elon Musk. Yeah. And we all know that Elon and of course Stephen Hawking, they are always right. You like that topic, I can tell. Naturally, would have gone the other way around. But if you force me on that aspect and flip mm. the coin, I will do everything to win. You flip the coin, my friend. I know I flip the coin. <laughs> <laughs>